Okay, today we want to cover two things concerning bone. We want to talk about bone tissue. So there's two different types of bone tissue. And we'll talk about the composition and kind of the microscopic anatomy of those. And then we also want to talk about whole bones. There's four categories of bones. So we want to be able to classify bones into one of those four categories. So bone tissue is different than bones themselves. Bone tissue is the actual material that makes up your bones. And there's two types of bone tissues. One is compact and the other is spongy. So um, compact bone is considered much more dense. So you can see this picture over here. You don't see a lot of holes or, or spaces in between it, so it's very dense. This is due to um, mineral salts, calcium, and phosphate make up the hardness of bone. Also in here you find collagen. Collagen gives your bone strength. So usually you find compact bone in outer layers of bone. Because it's compact, it's dense, it's protective. So it's going to protect the whole bone, the organ itself. Bones are organs because they're made up of several different types of tissue. It's also going to um, protect the other type of tissue we're going to talk about is the cancellous tissue or spongy um, and that's where bone marrow is made so we want to protect that so that we can keep making blood. Um, so the job of compact bone is really for support, structure, um, and protection. So the structural component of compact bone or dense tissue is the osteon or the herversion system. So two words mean the same thing. Um, this right here, this circle set, would be called an osteon. So um, inside of the osteon you have the herversion canal that's right here. Um, through the herversion canal you have blood vessels and nerves, nerve fibers that run through there to um, provide nourishment to the bone as well as innervation. Um, then you see you have these rings. To me, these remind me of annual rings in a tree. You've probably seen a tree cut um, horizontally, and you've seen the rings that we can count and see how old the tree is. So these rings are called lamella. So this osteon has one, two, three lamella. And that's where the matrix that actually makes up the bone is found. So arranged along this uh, circle, you find osteocytes. Remember that's bone cell, site to cell, osteo bone. So you find bone cells. They're kind of star-shaped. So this is what that cell looks like. And you see there are several in this circle. Now, the bone cell is found in a pit, I'm going to describe it as. Um, and that, that pit is called a lacuna. Um, in most graphics, you won't be able to differentiate between the lacuna and the osteocyte because one is sitting inside of the other. So that would be um, an osteocyte sitting in a lacuna. Now, this arrow would be that osteocyte. The line is kind of going the wrong spot. Okay. The last one is canaliculi, so that's kind of a fun word to say, I think. Um, canaliculi are little canals, so C and C, canals. So you have the haversion canal going down the center of the, of the bone, so that's running parallel with the surface of the bone. And then you have running between each of those layers, each of the lamella, you have these little cracks, is the way I like to think of them, as, and they're called canaliculi. So blood vessels are going to run between, um, little capillaries are going to run between these osteocytes. So that's going to bring nourishment to the osteocyte as well as take away waste products from the cell. So you might notice that this bone material looks much different than the circular bone material that we just looked at a moment ago. So this is called spongy bone. Spongy bone also is called cancellous tissue. And I will almost always refer to it as cancellous tissue. So you want to get used to that. Um, different resources will use different versions of the word. So you want to recognize either name. Um, we said compact bone is found on the outside of bone. Protecting it, you're going to find the cancellous tissue on the inside of the bone. Um, and what you notice is that there's lots of spaces 
in this bone tissue, right? So it's very porous. That's how it gets its name. Sponges, as you know, have many pores in them. So spongy bone is porous. Um, it contains a large number of blood vessels. So this red stuff that you see is actually the bone. That's a little bit, that's the confusing part. And then, oh, sorry. Um, and then this is the spaces in between the bone. So within the bone, you find bone marrow. Um, and like I said, there's lots of blood vessels, so it's very well nourished. Um, in your long bones, like in your arms and legs, the ends of your bones are called epiphyses. Remember, epi is above or upon. So at the ends of long bone, you're going to find that those knobs are filled with cancellous tissue, and then it has a thin layer of the compact on the outside. Okay, so the microscopic anatomy of the spongy bone is quite different than the microscopic anatomy of the compact bone. So in the compact bone, we saw rings of lamella. The, but over here, you don't see any rings at all, right? So this is called trabiculae. So the red is what we're looking at. That's actually the bone. So the red is um, the matrix, and the lamella is what makes up the matrix, right? Um, is in the form of nothing in particular. It's described as a regular lattice, and you know that's where we're going to find our lacuna and our osteocytes. So here you see little pores. We're going to look for these under the microscope. And those are the lacuna. It's easier to differentiate lacuna from osteocyte, I think, in the compact bone. I mean, I'm sorry, in the spongy bone than in the compact bone. So here you can see this one kind of looks like a black-eyed pea, but not the right colors. It has a little dot inside of it. So that little dot is the osteocyte. So that's kind of cool. So the spaces between the trabiculae have red bone marrow in them. And why is red bone marrow important? Because... It is the site of hematopoiesis. Hematopoiesis is the formation of blood. So hemoblood, poiesis, formation of. So we usually are referring to um, specifically the formation of red blood cells. Okay, are you still with me? So we've talked about two types of bone tissue. And we talked about where they were found and what makes them up, like microscopically. So now we're kind of shifting gears, no longer talking about tissue, we're talking about whole bones, big structures. So these bones are made up of those tissues, right? So there's four different types of bones. You have long bones, by definition, they are long. Short bones, you, a lot of times people want to say fingers and toes are short bones, but they don't meet the characteristics of a short bone, so we'll talk about that. Flat bones are by definition flat, and irregular bones, as its name implies, is rather irregular. So for our test, I would want you to know two things about the different types of bones. First, I want you to know where they're found. Second, I want you to recognize their descriptions. So short bones are cuboidal in shape, and they're found in the wrist and in the ankles, also in the patella, the kneecap. So wherever you see this turquoisey color, that's a short bone. So um, typically they are cube shaped and then they're filled with cancellous material, so the spongy bone, and then they have a thin layer of compact on the outside. So they're more porous, they probably um, have greater shock absorption, right? And that makes sense. You've fallen on your hands and you've been thankful that your wrist could take Okay, so long bones are longer than they are wide. So look at this femur bone, quite long in comparison to its width. So again, look at the turquoise. Where do you find long bones? You find it in your arms, your legs, your hands and your feet, but not your wrist or ankle because those are short bones. Um, some characteristics of the long bone is that the shaft is called the diaphysis, so vocabulary terms. That is going to be almost all compact bone. And then the epiphyses, epi above or upon, the epiphyses are filled with cancellous tissue, so that's where we find our bone marrow. And there's a thin layer of compact bone on the outside to, compact, to protect that um, cancellous tissue. So flat bones are found in the skull and in the thorax. So remember the thorax is the chest. So um, Characteristic of flat bone 
is that it's made of two thin layers of compact bone and then varying amounts of spongy bone. So I think of this as a sandwich. And the two pieces of bread are my compact bone, and then I filled it with jelly, which is my spongy bone. So I find it in the ribs and in the skull. That's the most common. So that just leaves the irregular bone. So irregular bones are found in the pelvis and in the vertebral column. Here's some individual vertebrae over here. So this is similar to a short bone in that it's filled with cancellous material and then it has a thin layer of compact on the outside. The difference is, is it just doesn't have a regular shape. So that's all I have for you today. We talked about two types of bone tissue, what makes them up, where they're found, microscopic anatomy, and we talked about four types of um, bone whole bones, so the organ itself, um, where they're found, and how they are composed as it relates to those two tissue types. So thanks for listening.